Yeah, I'd like to take a few minutes um, and just go through two case studies. And this season, uh, Dr. Joe approached us about using a product uh, I was intrigued with. We had been uh, using it in a different form. And during the 2020 season, we used these uh, patches in a couple of different cases. And, and uh, today we'll, I'll speak on two of those in particular. So our first case study is a 22 year old college football player, uh, senior linebacker. Uh, he experienced a, a left ankle grade two uh, anterior talofibular ligament sprain. Last year in 2019, he actually experienced the same injury, uh, also a grade two injury. Uh, this year, the injury occurred in the second quarter of the game. He was evaluated immediately on our sideline tent uh, entered the tent with moderate swelling, uh, obvious strength deficits, and an antalgic gait. Uh, he was immediately removed from the game. When we got back home to campus, uh, we took x-rays, which were negative for any acute fractures. So immediately after that, uh, after the injury, our post-game treatment plan uh, was follows. Uh, we iced him down for 20 minutes immediately afterwards. We put him on, on crutches, in a walking boot, and in a compression wrap. During halftime, we took him up to the locker room, let him shower. Afterwards, uh, put him um, back into the walking boot and compression, as well as the crutches. But first, we put the active men patch on. We put that underneath the compression sleeve uh, as, as our initial treatment, uh, treatment plan is, is started there. I will say these Actimen patches, uh, they were applied. I, I asked our student athletes to keep them on for 48 hours. Uh, they were able to remove them when they showered, uh, but then they were asked to dry the area and put it immediately back on. Our typical treatment plan, uh, much like uh, many of you all in your athletic training rooms, um, going through a, a, a standard ankle sprain here, uh, going through your ice, walking boot compression, but also your, your HIVA mats, your biowave, laser therapy, massage therapy, as well as your uh, active rehab plans. Very similar, I would assume, that uh, you all are experiencing. So what happened with ours, uh, day one, post-injury, Sunday we come in, we have our med call report, um, have everybody that played in the game follows up. He comes in uh, sat, uh, Sunday afternoon, Self-reports significant decrease in swelling um, upon exam. Also, obviously, had a significant decrease in swelling. He had improved range of motion with little to no pain throughout all ranges of motion. He had a normal gait. Um, at that time, typically, uh, we start our treatment plan again. Uh, there were some things that we could actually cut out of that process. Uh, we didn't do any hevimat nor laser therapy due to his, due to his current status. Uh, but more importantly, we jump ahead here, I apologize. More importantly, we were able to initiate his rehab plan based on the decrease in, in pain and swelling. Uh, we did do some contrast bath therapy just based on the recovery needs for his lower half uh, playing in the game uh, and then keeping in his routine there as well. And then finally, we discontinued all use of, of crutches after Sunday. On Monday, uh, he reports again two days post uh, or two days post injury. Uh, he we did keep him in the walking boot and compression as well as that active men patch. Uh, keeping him in the boot is more of a preventative measure to take some of that stress off of his his ankle. We did continue his rehabilitative care plan, and we initiated his movement. We were able to progress into uh, that movement progression in the hydro works. And then again, if you look at our treatment plan, uh, we were able to cut out a lot of those treatments. Uh, sometimes we look at and, and, and uh, throw, the, uh, throw the shotgun approach at them. Uh, at times, I feel like in all of our training rooms, and we were able to, to cut out a lot of that where we were just cutting that down to contrast with our Kelby units. On day three, we discontinued use of his walking boot. Uh, he was held from practice. This was our first day of practice this week. He continued his rehab plan. He's progressing through his Alter G movement. 
uh, doing very well there. Uh, started them at 50% all the way up to 90%. And we got them in our therapy pool, uh, which has different depths where we can do some dynamic movement uh, as well in there. We did do more contrast bath therapy for recovery needs uh, based on some of those uh, dynamic movements and agility uh, plyometric movements we were doing in the uh, therapy pool. And then we continued with our compression and active men patch uh, at all times as well. On day four, on Wednesday, like heading in there, we held him from practice again, but we continued to progress that rehab, uh, his running uh, movement progression. He was able to get onto the field, uh, start his field work, a linear run progression, uh, went through no pain, no problems, no increase in swelling. Um, again, if you look at that post rehabilitative, rehabilitative uh, treatment plan, again, able to cut a lot of that uh, treatment time out of his uh, out of his day. Day five, I, I probably highlight day five here. Uh, typically, uh, in uh, the old coaching uh, scheme, there if they weren't practicing by Wednesday, they weren't going to play, and at that time uh, he was held from practice. Uh, due to they were doing more install on that day um, and less uh, indie work or anything else where uh, he would have participated in practice. Uh, so he was to the point of, of being able to do some of the initial uh, early phases of practice, would not participate in the entire practice, <clears throat> but did, uh, did work into some hard change of direction work um, and uh, started his initial um, position specific movements as well. On Friday, again, uh, we have our, our walkthrough slash run through on Friday morning. Uh, we, he was held from that again because more of the install of that day. And then we continued to increase his position specific movements and the, the volume of and loads uh, that he was going through at that time. Uh, Saturday rolls around, did not play because he was not in the game plan at that point in time. We did continue his compression and active men patch. Um, I will say if we fast forward the next week, uh, he practiced all of the next week and he played in that game. And more importantly, uh, to highlight that, it, he, he missed three weeks of practice in this season, 2020, and as well as one game. Last year, the same injury, um, he missed nine practices in three games. So quite the the decrease in, in time missed on the field. Quickly go over our uh, second case study here. Uh, more highlighting that return to weight room progression on this one. Uh, so this one will be a little bit shorter here, but this is a 19-year-old male uh, college football player, sophomore running back. He had his uh, left AC sprain. He has no previous history of any uh, shoulder injuries. It, it did occur in the third quarter of the game. He was evaluated in our sideline tent. Uh, step off was noted, strength deficits were noted, uh, and he had limited range of motion. He was removed from the game at that time. Again, uh, after, we're, after the game, x-rays were taken, uh, were negative for any acute fractures, was diagnosed uh, with a grade two AC sprain. Again, our post-treatment plan, uh, modeling uh, similar format before, um, icing him immediately afterwards, getting him calmed down there. An active men patch was applied uh, immediately afterwards as well. Uh, and we did allow him to remove that uh, to take a shower. After that, after the game, we put that patch back on and we applied it with coverall strips uh, to hold that down securely uh, while he slept that night. So our typical treatment plan, what that could potentially look like at times, it could be the use of a sling. Again, many of you are going through these and using these in your training room and daily, uh, daily post-injury treatment plans. So Sunday, uh, coming off the injury, uh, what did he look like? Uh, he reported a significant decrease in pain, uh, he improved range of motion through all uh, range of, uh, through all planes, and reported a pain levels 
uh, four out of 10. Uh, initially, the day before on Saturday, he was reporting uh, a pain in the upwards of seven or eight out of 10 based on uh, either flexion abduction. <clears throat> and then due to his decrease in pain levels uh, on Sunday, we were able to initiate his rehabilitative care plan uh, due to that decrease in pain and swelling. So doing much better at this point. So fast forward over the next two weeks, again, this is very standard that, again, you guys are going through. Uh, we worked on his motion, his proprioception, perception, excuse me, and his strengthening exercises. Uh, we did go through and modify his, his weight room activities, took him through many single arm movements downstairs in the weight room uh, and supplemented those movements up, upstairs here in the training room or in the training room on a daily basis. He was held from practices uh, two through five or two through seven, excuse me, including one game missed. And thereafter, uh, he did practice and played in in game in the game the following week, which was on day 14. Throughout this period of time, we did use uh, that active men patch again that was changed out every 48 hours and was secured down using those coverall strips. Uh, but more importantly, as we talked about in the beginning, we modified their movements down in the weight room. What was impressive about this case uh, is that on day 16 post injury, he was a able to begin all pressing movements in, in the weight room. Uh, again, we see this in, in our athletic training room. You guys are seeing it in yours as well, but many times that's three to six weeks when we're getting them back in into full pressing movements uh, without any pain or problems or limitations. Uh, so at day 16, we saw a significant improvement in his, in his pain motion, uh, which directly correlated with the increase in his strength as well. Yeah, hi, how you doing? This is Paul Sebastian at the University of Florida. Um, yeah, so we, we started using the uh, active men patches during the season this year. Um, you know, I think uh, it, we, this is one of those years that we, we had a run of AC joint sprains and then kind of a run of ankle sprains at the end of the year. And you know, I think with any, any new product, um, you know, that we look at, there's obviously the subjective side from the athletes, but there has to be that objective side that we see uh, as well before we bring it into use, you know, and I think the, that in this case, they, they both matched up, you know, and basically I saw the, the extent of uh, return to play with the AC joints and guys being able to be functional faster at practice, you know, typically we would keep them no contact for a longer period during the season if they have an AC joint sprain and able to uh, get them going on Saturdays. But uh, I, I think we were able to get them back going at their normal practice tempos, uh, non, uh, not, not using the non-contact phase faster. So I think that was a huge eye opener for us. And then just the overall with the ankle sprains, the acute inflammation, the acute swelling, we, we saw a lot looking at different measurements, growth measurements that we were doing. Um, a big difference compared to previous uh, data that we've had on, on different athletes. So again, I think it's a, it's a great product. And I, I really do feel that it's a, a product that should be used in the athletic training rooms and with the athletes and, and it's based off the, the feedback as well that we received from them. Okay. Hi, good morning, everyone. This is Cheryl Bueno. I'm a certified athletic trainer for the uh, USTA Pro Tennis Circuit and the UTR Pro Tennis Tour. Um, I've been using the Sterna Active Med Recovery Patches about two and a half weeks now, and I just kind of wanted to share some of the success stories I had. Um, currently, we are on the third week of a three-week Pro Series Tour. Um, during the first week is when I first implemented the product. I had an athlete who came in, uh, he arrived and he reported having medial, right medial epiponolitis, uh, which is his hitting arm. And it started about a week or so prior to his arrival. So every day that week prior to his matches, he came in, we did moist heat and we applied a topical heating agent. Uh, Post-match treatment, we did blades, cupping, and then ice. And then um, the athlete didn't report any significant changes, but we, we just treated him daily with the same regimen just to prevent the symptoms from getting worse. Uh, on the fifth day, I applied the, uh, the Actimed patch uh, for overnight use. So after his, after his match, he came in, we put it on uh, after his treatment. And then the next day the player came in 
and he didn't need to have any uh, treatment prior to his match because he reported that all his pain was resolved and um, no further treatment was needed for the rest of the tournament. We did still continue to do the post, um, post match uh, treatments just to, just to maintain and ensure that it didn't get worse. And uh, he made it onto the finals and was completely pain free. Um, second asset I had was a left adductor strain. It happened during warmups. He had like a four out of four, four to five out of ten pain. Um, he was sliding to reach a ball during warmups. He came to see me immediately right after, after it happened, and we applied the uh, patch directly to the area. And just a side note, he he wasn't wearing compression shorts, so I wasn't sure that it would stay very well. But we did apply it, and um, his match occurred about two hours after, mm. and he was completely pain free for the match. Um, he, he had to take it off, uh, during warmups of the match only because he wasn't comp wearing compression shorts and it was moving around, um, a little bit. And the reason why I, I bring that up is because my third person that I'm talking, I want to speak about is, um, he was a right hip flexor strain. Same thing happened during warmups. Um, he came to see me immediately after, uh, he felt a pull in his, uh, hip flexor. We put the patch immediately on. He, um, he had compression shorts on, so we were able to put it on without having to secure it with any pepper roll. And um, within 15 to 20 minutes after, uh, pain was completely gone. He, had, he reported like a seven out of 10 pain and he was able to return to his match and actually ended up winning the finals that day. And he came to tell me that he had been moving better during the finals than he had been all week. Um, all week he was managing, he was self-managing the pain, he didn't report it to me, but he was self-managing with um, ibuprofen and topicals. And so with one application of the patch within minutes, he was completely pain-free and um, able to go on to win the finals. So I have, I've had a lot of success with the uh, Activan patch and I just wanted to share those, those with you. Um, I've communicated with a lot of you. Um, I got involved with this kind of from the beginning, we are eventually gonna put, uh, Sierra on our uh, ATC seminar, the DGO ATC seminar as a sponsor, and they were going to talk about this. And obviously, a crazy year last year uh, kicked off right about that time and went into the COVID situation. So we figured out a way to kind of basically get to all of you. Um, we went out to NFL, Power Five, um, NBA, um, looking for feedback and um, we sent out, gosh, I can't even, I can't remember how many teams, but several NBA, several NFL, and lots and lots of, uh, of power five college teams. And um, I was privy to, you know, see the feedback and talk with many of you who used it. Um, and amazingly enough there, you know, it's funny listening to Zach's conversation, but um, or his, his piece on the, the winning um, injuries versus winning, um, we had, uh, I think three of the four NFL teams that were in the playoffs and the Super Bowl champions. Um, now that could be also due to a little a new quarterback they had, but um, but they were all using the active men product. And we had some power five football teams that this year versus last year actually had uh, a much better year and were very successful, probably a couple of the teams more successful using the product because they went through several boxes of it. They were using it a lot. And the common feedback is not only one getting athletes back faster, but you're able to treat them right at the time of injury. After they showered, they were able to put it on, send them home. And really the rehab starts with no hands on the athlete. Um, so that was the big thing. And they were coming in the next day with reduced swelling and you're able to get in there and get manual on them. So, um, Feedback was incredible. Um, I've used it on myself, used it on um, neighbors and kids and, um, and uh, everything I've gotten so far back from, from uh, people who have tried it. Uh, you know, it's been great feedback. So I do definitely get some product. And the thing is not just get it, but use it. Um, the people who have actually used it, it's working for them. And you'll become very, very familiar from what I've said. The more they used it, the more they're comfortable they got putting it on. And, and that's what we want. We want the feedback. We know it works. 
but we want the feedback, how you're using it, how you're putting it on, what you're putting it on, what type of injuries, things like that. Um, but I think you're going to get the benefit, but that's the feedback that, you know, we're looking for. So um, please do yourself a favor and, and get this. And uh, hopefully here soon, we'll be able to get in person and live and, and help you, um, you know, become better technicians with this, uh, this product. So thanks for everyone who has um, used it and please reach out uh, and, and get some and use it. Um, your athletes will benefit. And, uh, and like, you know, Zach said, if you can get them better, get them, keep them on the field, it turns into wins. So that's the most important thing, right? Um, so thanks guys and, and gals, and we will, uh, we'll keep, uh, reaching out to you.